Hey, Alec Mill here, founder of Rose and Rogues, and today we're playing with fire. If you're anything like me, as a child, you were a pyromaniac. I think most kids are somewhat pyromaniac by nature. It's just a feeling of, I guess, of power and, and destruction. <laughs> you know, you become this, this pyromancer and um, you just want to start lighting everything on fire as soon as you discover that that's something you can do as a person. However, as an adult, I understand that arson is wrong and uh, also kind of dangerous. So I now get my pyromancer kicks out digitally. And my favorite program at the moment to do this is Embergen. They just released 1.0 and I highly recommend giving it a look. The real time nature of Embergen is what I love about it. The fact that I can get instant feedback on my simulations. When doing simulation work and in digital work in general, one of the things I have the hardest time with is the lag time. I'm not very good at, you know, making a bunch of little changes across my entire piece and then hitting render and then going, oh, that all looks great. I mostly wanna make small changes and then see instantly what happened after I made that change. And when you're simulating something, that can easily take hours or even days. And so that's what's so cool about Embergen for me is it's a lot like playing with actual fire. You can throw it around, you can move it in circles, you can do whatever you want with it and it reacts instantly. Now, the ultimate dream of any pyromaniac is to have a flamethrower. That's about as good as it gets for us uh, human pyromancers, right? The ability to point and shoot a flame at something and light it on fire. So we're gonna make a flamethrower and where we have to start is where we always start. And you're gonna get tired of hearing me say this, but it's just the truth and that's reference. We got to start with reference. We're gonna find a few examples of flamethrowers. And as I did my research, I came across a, a pattern. I noticed there's kind of really three categories of flamethrower. The first is an aerosol style flamethrower. This is what happens when you take an ax can and you spray it through a lighter. You get this sort of puff of flame. It ignites super quick. It burns away super fast. It doesn't really leave any residue or a trail. Um, and it's not very effective. It doesn't really do a lot of damage. You could probably point it at like a, a piece of furniture or wall for a little while without it igniting because it's not actually depositing any chemicals um, on the surface. It's just burning away and in, in the air. The next is the Elon Musk not a flamethrower type of flamethrower. It shoots a bit more fire um, and it has a lot more flame, but it also doesn't really shoot any chemicals out. That's the goal. You don't really want it to to cast a bunch of napalm everywhere. It creates a flame, but it's not really a flamethrower. It's really just like a, a flame jet. It's like a jet of, of fire. So this is what you're gonna see at sporting events. And it, the goal is to keep it from doing a lot of damage. Really, you gotta point it at something, keep it pointed at something, and it's only burning as long as you have your finger on the trigger. As soon as you let go, all the fire kind of goes out. And then there's the third type of flamethrower. And this is like, real flamethrowers. This would be what you see in footage from Vietnam, and that's the idea of napalm. It's this jet of sticky, viscous um, fluid that's landing on stuff and stays burning for a long time. One puff will create a bunch of fire, and it's like, it's a, so much fire when it comes out, and it's like black smoke. It's gonna be shooting out a jet of liquid that ignites while traveling. It coats its target and it stays burning for a while. That's what we wanna make. I've looked at a few examples of flamethrowers and I found a couple of pieces of reference that I really like that we can use. I think our key attributes that we need to keep an eye out for is really having a jet of fire, like having a, a stream of fire and not just a flame coming out of um, a not an entrance. The second is we gotta have a lot of fuel. It's gotta land on its subject and stay burning when it hits. Um, for a while and it's got to create a lot of this black puffy smoke like that's really what sells it to me um, as a flamethrower so now that we got our criteria now that we know what we want to make uh, let's make our flamethrower all right so here we are in a new Embergen scene and this is what you're going to see when you start up Embergen you hit new project and we have this nice fire already going which is cool and it's set up pretty much ready to go we're gonna make a few tweaks right away though. First, we're gonna change the shape to a sphere and we're gonna make that way smaller. We're gonna do 0.2. So now we have this little tiny sphere here. The next thing I wanna do is change our emitter from volume to particle. And the difference is, is instead of lighting the shape on fire and that shape being the motivation for what's lit, 
we are emitting particles and then we light those particles on fire. Okay. Underneath particles, we're going to jump to rendering and we're going to turn that on. And what that's going to do is let us see our particles emitting. And I'm going to move, if you go over to scene node over here, and if you disconnect the volume, now we can see our particles and how they render. Okay, doke. So the next thing we're going to want to change is all the noise. So this is our um, noise affecting our simulation. And then there's noise affecting our spawning. And we're not those both off. Um, this isn't connected to our, our particle emitter, so it should be fine, but we still want to change that just so we don't mess with it. Next, we're going to turn back on our volume by connecting in that to our scene, and we're going to deconnect our particles because we don't really need to see them right this second. From here, we're going to start our way at the top and work down. So in a mission, what I'm going to want to do is drop our um, emission style from regular to clumped. And what that's going to do is clump various particles together as they emit. So you can see that again, if we switch over to particles, you can see the particles are kind of connected in puffs. Next, what we're going to want to do is change how many though. And we're on this pretty high. I'm going to take it up to like a thousand. Um, and then the clump size, instead of 10%, we're going to go up to like, you know, 80%. So now we're kind of similar to what we had before, but What's going to happen is these particles are going to kind of want to stick together uh, more, which is what I like. It just seems to give me the best results. You you play with this as you need to. Um, from there, we're going to go down to freeze and we're just going to roll that up. We're not going to be freezing our particles here. What that does is it emits them as static. And what then you can do is if you hit them with something or move them or whatever, then they'll start to activate. So this might be good if you wanted um, to do a very particular effect, like a snowball that gets hit or something. Um, but we're not doing that. We're just gonna let these spawn the way they are. Next, we're gonna come down to lifetime. And this is a pretty big deal. We're gonna want these a lot longer. Cause again, we wanna spew out these particles as fuel and then we want that to be lit. So we want this to be on for a few seconds. We'll do like five to 10 seconds. Okay. From there, we need to look at our velocity from position. And this is our initial forces tab. And so what I don't want is this stuff all coming out at um, the same speed from all over. What I want to do is shoot it out. And so we're going to choose velocity cone. And what that's going to do is shoot in a particular cone area. And right now, you can kind of see our cone here. It's shooting upwards. And that's because our Z is at 1. So we want to turn Z 0. And now it's not emitting in any direction. Uh, if you look down at a little gizmo here, we want it shooting on the X axis. So then we're going to turn up our X. And so now it's shooting out more in this direction. But as you can see, it's flying up in the air right away. And there's a few reasons for this. Um, also, if you're not seeing your gizmos and whatnot, go to view and then you need to turn on uh, manipulator switcher. And that's going to let you see all your little controls. Um, and our initial forces, we might want to up that as well um, to like 1.8 or so. Um, and that's going to shoot it out sideways. So we're still shooting straight up. And the reason for that is where our simulation is affecting our particles here. Um, and there's a few ways of adjusting this. One is we can just go over here to force and like drop the buoyancy down, let's say to zero. And you'll notice it's no longer shooting upwards anymore. Um, and we could keep messing with all these things. We could turn our wind off, right? Um, and so on and so forth. And that that works. There's a faster way you can also do that as well. Um, while I'm in our simulation tab, let's go to simulation size and let's turn it way up in X and Y. So that way we can actually see um, our flame. This is going to cost more more GPU memory. Um, so you might have to toy with this a little differently than I am. I am right. As you can see, I'm already using seven gigs of, Z of VRAM. So if you're on a lighter card than me, then this is going to be a problem for you. Um, but I'm using a 3090 Ti uh, because I want to be able to do this, obviously. Um, so now we have this thing emitting tons of particles. Those particles are flying everywhere. Um, 
And if we don't want to mess with all of our forces to try to get this right, what we can just do is go to our active forces tab and under volume, drop that down, right? And what that is, is that's how much this simulation volume is affecting our particles. So now we're spraying them out everywhere. So let's go back to our initial forces. And the problem is our cone is way too wide. So instead of 45 degrees, we want to drop this cone spreading way, 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 way down to like one, right? Um, or maybe even like 0.5. And that's giving us more of a condensed stream here that's then shooting out. Now, if you notice, it's hitting and it's just bouncing off like water. So that's where we're going to do active forces um, and then collisions. And our collisions, we want to turn the bounciness down to like zero, really, really low. Um, so it doesn't bounce so much. There we go. And then we're going to turn our friction um, up higher. And now if I hit restart, if I hit R, we'll restart the sim. And you'll notice it's kind of hitting and then sticking to what it hits, which is more or less what we want. One of the problems we're having right now is size over life. We can change our size if we want. And what I'm going to do is have it be mostly the same, but then drop off so they don't last forever. So if I turn this way, way low, you, what you can notice is the particles are going to get small, right? They shrink. And so I want them lasting for a while and then dropping off. So we're going to keep this high um, like that. Um, okay. From there, we can go to our rendering, um, which we've already checked, so that's good. And then injection, and this is where a lot of the magic's gonna happen. So we're gonna turn back on our, our volume so we can see our fire again, turn off our particles, and look at that. That's pretty cool. So under injection right now, we can, we can inject a bunch of smoke if we want. Um, we can ch choose how long that smoke lasts and how it lasts. Um, which is all good and dandy. Um, I don't want too, too much smoke uh, right now. I like it kind of being a little bit less smoky at the moment, and we're gonna change some other stuff that will affect that. Under temperature, right now we're at uniform, so that means that everything's gonna be exactly the same temperature all the time. And that's not what I want. What I wanna do is um, change it to per particle matching size. Um, and that's going to be meaning that each particle as it's big or small, that's how hot it's going to be. Um, and then we can change our ramp if we want and our range. I want a little bit cooler than it is now. I think it will look better in the long run. Um, and then you have the temperature fade uh, over time. Temperature ramp. You can flip that. Um, and then if I look at our fuel, we have no fuel. And I actually want fuel because flamethrowers have fuel. So we're gonna turn that up to 100. Um, and I only want it though coming out of the very beginning. I just want to fuel at the front and then I want it to drop off. But we're not seeing it. And if you're not seeing something, chances are the issue you have is in your shading. So if I go to shading um, and I want to click on render fuel. And if you look, you'll see that it's not rendering. So shading, I'm going to click on the fuel tab and I'm going to click render fuel. And you'll notice a little tiny bit of blue here, but it still doesn't look like it's contributing much. Um, and that's because of the density limit and the fuel density scale. And what the density limit's doing is it's changing how dense it has to be in order to show up. So if it's not 100% dense, then it doesn't show up. If it's not 14% dense, it doesn't show up. And now what we're saying is let's lower that to like, if it's 2%, if it's 3%, then show up. And this is going to increase um, of what's showing up, you know, of or of the fuel that's there, how much are we increasing it? So we're going to increase that by like 300%, right? So as you'll notice, we're, we're pushing more fuel, right? We're saying, okay, take this little bit and increase it. And then now we're seeing it because of our limit. But I still want the limit to be pretty high because I just want it showing up at the very beginning there. And now we're seeing our fuel and we're just seeing it as it spawns right at the start. All right, so this is looking more and more like a flamethrower by the second. What else do we want to do? Um, let's take a look. 
So in our flames, what I think I want to have is less flames right away because I want to see that fuel. And then they can kind of shoot up and do their thing, right? So the, f the flames right away are going to be pretty low. I'm also going to take our fuel. I'm going to change this from cubic to linear just so it's super straight where it starts and stops. Okay, so now let's go to our simulation. And over here, we can change a lot of things. One thing I want to change is our combustion. So if I go to combustion, um, we can show how much smoke we're generating. So we can put more smoke, right? Or less smoke. Um, and again, that this active forces underneath the volume, this is going to affect how much that contributes. So just be aware of that as you're going back and forth. If one thing's not working or is working, you know, you might want to switch back and forth. Um, we can change how quickly the smoke dissipates. I don't want it dissipating super fast. Um, we can change our flame intensity to make the flames more intense or less intense. And then we can change our expansion, which I currently want actually really, really low. Um, the other thing you can change here is vorticity, and that's how uh, curly kind of your flame is going to be or how not. Um, that's more like candle smoke, right? If you have it really, really low. And if you have it really high, it's going to be super noisy. So you can turn that how you want it to be. Um, and then under forces, we have our gravity, we have our wind, uh, which I want, I want zeroed out for now. Um, and then you have shredding. Shredding is kind of interesting. Um, it causes like little micro explosions, essentially. You can toy with that. I'm going to leave it uh, off for now. There's a few other things to tweak and check out. One of the things I want to do is see how much this is sticking. So if I move it down here, right, and then move it up, is this sticking around? And not exactly. It's just kind of dying out. So we kind of have this Elon Musk flamethrower effect, right? We're shooting out a big bunch of fire. But that fire is not really sticking around. So what's going on here? Going to be our life. So we want to make sure that's plenty high. And I'm going to turn back on our particles just to see what's going on with them. Okay, so they're hitting and they're sticking. That's good. So if they're sticking and we're not getting fire, then it's probably having to do um, with another setting. So let's go, now that we know those are good, let's go over here and check out what's going on. So we have our injection and we can look at temperature. Let's we can try to keep that going for longer. See if that helps ish, but not exactly. There must be something else we're missing other than temperature. And that's probably our temperature fade rate. I'm going to keep that hot longer. And then the other thing we're probably going to want to change is our flames. And let's change this so that they stay. Let's switch this to linear. They stay longer here. So now if I restart this and I grab our flamethrower here, and I turn it. We're getting a little bit more of that fire effect that we like where it hits something, casts a bunch of stuff and then it keeps it burning. Okay, so now that we have our flamethrower kind of doing what we want, we're, we're going around, we can get it to drop our particles where we want and light things on fire, right? Let's get this shape a little bit better, eh? Um, so one thing is, I think we're probably emitting a little bit too many particles. So I go to the mission, I'm gonna drop this down just a bit. That's looking good. Um, the other thing we can do is play with our shading to kind of get this looking closer to what we want. So under shading, we can look at our flames and we can change that to be a little bit wider. Kind of tweak that. And if we go to our smoke, um, we want this to be that big black smoke that we talked about. So we're gonna change our minimum color to black. Um, and our, we're gonna ramp this a little bit. And so now we can start getting that kind of more, you know, dark, black, nasty feel. 
um, going there, which I like. Yeah, that's looking pretty fun, huh? Next, um, we can go to back to our flames and we can look at some of the shaping here and see that lets us really dial in the look. And one of the things I want to do is rotate this a bit so we can kind of get an idea of our fire on the ground. Yeah. And see now that's starting to feel like a flamethrower there. Um, this might not work for you, again, depending on how powerful your graphics card is. But I'm going to go to our simulation. I'm going to go to simulation size, and I'm actually going to double the size. We'll see how this works with me trying to record while doing this. So I'm going to upscale it by two. And now it's going to be twice as many particles shooting out and, and whatnot. And that's going to give us a really detailed, super cool looking flamethrower effect here. So I'm really, I'm liking that a lot. And then from here on out, it's mostly just art direction, right? It's figuring out what exactly, how you exactly want this to look, right? So you can change your vor vorticity. How curly do I want this? Do I want this super curly here? I'm gonna increase the size of this a little bit. Um, do I want it less curly? Um, more jet engines, you know, like. You mess with your combustion. How much smoke are you generating? Do you want to generate way more smoke, less smoke? Um, you know, same thing with your injection. Uh, how much smoke do you want to inject into the scene? Um, and then your shading. Now, the shading won't affect your render if you're rendering out of VDB, um, but it does give you a good idea. You can kind of get an idea of what you want um, by looking at the shading and then try to recreate that in your what program of your choice. Um, so, you know, play around as needed. Um, but this more or less is a flamethrower. So I've messed with the shading, messed with a few other things. One other option you have before we head out is in your volume post-processing. So first off, you can just do stuff like sharpen, um, various aspects of it or make it less sharp. Um, you know, you can make your flames really flamey. Um, and same thing with fuel even. The that's fine. The other thing you can do is post modulation. And this is super powerful, but I do want to warn you, it's easy to screw up stuff when you're in here. And so we're gonna do um, for us flames. Uh, and we're not replacing our smoke with flames, that's not what I want to do. But as you can see, we just got rid of all our smoke. So there's you know, there's some cool stuff you can do, but flames to flames, right? And then what you can do is change the ramping. So, you know, if I raise it from zero, the whole thing is going to start filling up. And you can change your target range. Um, and this allows you to really dial in a few things. So one of the things I can do is turn on this post modulation, move this around here real quick, back and forth a little bit, get some of these flames on the ground going. And now that I got some of those ground flames, I'll be able to see them better or worse depending on my post modulation. Right, so um, I can kind of play with that. So that's something that's cool to do. Um, if you were looking to dial in a very specific look, I just warn you, again, it's easy to, to screw up stuff. So just save before you start playing around there. Uh, so there you have it. There's your Embergen Flamethrower. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I'll take it back to live action, Alec. And just so I have a thumbnail, I'm going to throw the simulation into a render. And I can't think of a better Flamethrower render than Warhammer 40K. Warhammer 40,000. That is my, my jam. For the Emperor! And what's better than one Flamethrower? two flamethrowers. So we're going to throw this on a penitent engine, which is one of the units for the Sisters of Battle, the Adepta Sororitas, um, which has a dual flamer on each hand. And uh, I'll render this out. We're going to see how it looks. It all goes up in time!
that's the final render uh, and how you make a flamethrower in Embergen. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And I think you're gonna wanna be subscribed because I'm almost done editing our first video in a series on how to make your own digital short film, documenting my entire journey building um, the most ambitious project I've ever done yet. I think it's gonna be really valuable and I'm putting a ton of work into these videos to make them really informative, but also entertaining. Um, so those are almost done, but it's taking a ton of work. So every time somebody joins the channel, it makes me feel like it's worth it, that someone's actually gonna see it and it's just not gonna go into the void of social media. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, break the rules, speak the truth and have fun.